Consider, if you will, this situation. We know that the tangent of alpha is 4 thirds, and alpha lies somewhere between pi and 3 pi over 2. We are interested in the following values, the sine of alpha over 2, the cosine of alpha over 2, and the tangent of alpha over 2. So it's very important that when we're talking about this type of problem, we recognize that we are talking about two different angles and their relationship is one is exactly double the size of the other. For example, um, alpha could be 40 degrees and alpha over two could be 20 degrees. So we may have some information about one of the angles, but we want actually all of the information about the other angle here. So in order to find the information about alpha over two, we first want to think about all the information we can gather about alpha. Well, we really know quite a bit. We know the tangent of alpha is four over three, and we know that this alpha angle is in the third quadrant between pi and three pi over two. Okay, so let's start by finding sine of alpha and cosine of alpha from what we know. Well, we definitely know that if tangent of alpha is four over three, we would have to say that x and y would have to be negative in the third quadrant, and x would be negative three while y is negative four. Well, that seems pretty logical. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take and use the relationship of x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. We know that from that relationship, we can sub in this x value and this y value and find what r is. We square the negative 3, we square the negative 4, and we end up with r squared is equal to 25. That means r would be plus or minus 5, but in this context, r is always positive. So we will say r is 5. Great. Now I've got everything I need to identify the sine of alpha, which is y over r, or negative 4 fifths, and the cosine of alpha, which is x over r, or negative 3 fifths. Beautiful. Okay, so I know quite a bit now about alpha. Now I need to think about alpha over two. Well, that gets a little tricky because I need to think to myself, hmm, well, if alpha is in the third quadrant, what do I know about alpha over two? Well, let's take a look. Since we know that alpha is between pi and three pi over two, we can take this inequality and multiply each piece of the inequality by one half. Okay, that will give us pi over 2 is less than alpha over 2, which is less than 3 pi over 4. This tells us that alpha over 2 is sitting in the second quadrant. This is going to allow us to make the appropriate sign choices, S-I-G-N, for our functions. So what do we know about the second quadrant. We know that the sine in the second quadrant, S-I-N-E, is going to be positive. We know that the cosine is going to be negative. And we also know that the tangent is going to be negative. And so we are going to keep those things in mind as we progress in this solution process. Okay, let's review what we know. We know that alpha is in the third quadrant. We know that the sine of alpha is negative four over five. We know that the cosine of alpha is negative 3 over 5, and we know that the tangent of alpha is 4 thirds. All right. We also know that, that alpha over 2 is in the second quadrant. We know that the sine of alpha over 2 is positive, while the cosine and the tangent are both negative. So let's go to our formulas. Start with sine of alpha over 2. We know that this is plus or minus 1 minus the cosine of alpha over 2. This is where the plus or minus comes in, right here. We know that the sine of alpha over two is positive. So here we will choose positive. Now we know the cosine of alpha is negative three fifths. So we're going to replace that negative three fifths right here. Let's take a look what that looks like. Positive one minus negative three fifths all over two. 
Well, this is really one plus three fifths, right? And let's make a common denominator of five fifths plus three fifths. This is going to give us eight fifths in the numerator over two, or half of eight fifths, which is going to be the square root of four fifths, which is the same as the square root of four, divided by the square root of five. The square root of four simplifies to two. And then we can rationalize this denominator by multiplying by the square root of five over the square root of five. And our final answer would be two square root of five over five. Beautiful, great work so far. Now let's continue and find the cosine of alpha over two. It's gonna be the same process. Let's identify the formula. Cosine of alpha over two is equal to plus or minus one plus the cosine of alpha all over two. Again, reminder of what we determined here, cosine of alpha over two is negative. So here we will select negative. We will put the negative three fifths in here again. Cosine of alpha is negative three fifths. So we're gonna put that in here and we're going to proceed and simplify what we end up with. So we have into the negative. We've got the negative three fifths in here. Let's create a common denominator of five over five. And this time we've got five over five minus three over five or two over five. So I've got half of two over five under the radical. So we would have the square root of one over five. And that's the same as the square root of one divided by the square root of five, and that's all negative. So that's gonna be one divided by the square root of five. When we rationalize, will be the square root of five over the five negative. All right, so now we have, so now we have two of our three pieces of the puzzle. Now let's go ahead to tangent of alpha over two. Same idea. We have uh, our formula and we know that tangent of alpha over two in this case is going to be negative. So we will select our negative value here. We already know cosine of alpha is negative three fifths. So we're gonna put that here and here. So we end up with something that looks like this. Negative one minus negative three fifths over one plus negative three fifths. So we end up with making those common denominators of five over five again, five over five plus three over five, which is eight fifths, five over five minus three fifths, which is two fifths, keeping that negative in front of the radical. And then if we simplify this by multiplying both pieces by five, we end up with negative square root of eight over two, otherwise known as negative square root of four, otherwise known as negative two. Well, that's beautiful. Um, and so we have found all three pieces that we were asked to find. Now, one other thing to keep in mind is remembering that if you know the sine and the cosine of a given angle, you can find the tangent by just dividing. So if you know those two things, we could have taken two squared of five over five and divided it by negative square root of five over five, we would have still ended up with that negative two. Either way is fine, and either way is perfectly justifiable. All right, I'll see you next time.